David Kemper. It was a really great band, David Kemper says. And I'm sorry not to be in it today. I miss Bob and I miss that band. He tells a particular story about the genesis of Cold Irons Bound. David Kemper was his drummer from 1996 to 2003, I believe. Uh, and he tells about the making of uh, Cold Irons Bound the following. He remembers he was earlier this particular day. He is alone in the studio. He starts drumming. He calls it a variation on a pattern I heard on my way here. A disco record with a Cuban beat. And then he tells. So I was playing this drum beat. And then Bob snuck up behind me and said, what are you playing? I said, hey Bob, how are you doing today? And he said, no, don't stop. What are you playing? I said, it's a beat. I'm just writing it right now. Don't stop it, keep doing it. And he went and he got a yellow pad of paper and he sat next to the drums and he just started writing. And he wrote for maybe 10 minutes. And then he said, will you remember that? And I said, yeah, I got it. And then he said, all right, everybody, come on in. I want to put this down. Um, Kemper suggests that this particular drum pattern inspires Dylan so much so that he hears a song in it and comes up with complete lyrics for Cold Irons Bound in 10 minutes. It, it is in line with more anecdotes we know about uh, Dylan's working method. Anecdotes who, uh, that tell how amazingly fast Dylan can produce lyrics. After the first two lines, it is already pretty clear what the inspired Dylan has in mind today. I'm beginning to hear voices and there's no one around. Well, I'm all used up and the fields have turned brown. The fields have turned brown. It's quite a giveaway. It's the song by the Stanley Brothers. Dylan's bluegrass heroes who we encounter a few times here on this album on Time Out of Mind in, um, in Make You Feel My Love, for example, uh, the, the Highway of Regret, that's, that's from a Stanley Brothers song. But this particular song, The Fields Have Turned Brown, that, that seems to be haunting Dylan, uh, Dylan's mind in these days. Uh, it's exactly the same song that he quotes in the telegram. He sends Dr. Ralph Stanley two months earlier, November 1996, which we no, thanks to the autobiography by, the, by Dr. Ralph Stanley, the Man of Constant Sorrow book. In this book, uh, Den um, Dylan is mentioned quite often, because uh, Ralph Stanley is, is rightly quite proud of the fact that Dylan ad admires him so much. And he mentions this telegram from 1996 twice. And the second time, he reveals the, the complete content of Stanley. They had a big celebration for me in Nashville in honor of my 50th anniversary as a professional musician. There was a fancy reception at the Country Music Hall of Fame with all kinds of friends from down through the years and former clinch mountain boys there to greet me. Then I played a show with my band at the Grand Ole Opry. During the show, Opry host Del Reeves announced to the crowd he had a telegram a special fan from New York City had sent. The telegram said, Dear Dr. Ralph, the fields have turned brown, not for you though. You'll live forever. Best wishes, Bob Dylan. That was something I didn't expect, and it was a wonderful surprise. I know what Bob meant in this message, and it really touched my heart. I know he meant my music would be around long after I'm dead and gone. 